Today on Locked On Rockies, the Rockies reportedly are going to be sellers at the trade deadline. First thing, I'll believe it when I see it. And the second thing is, is it going to change the future much? You are Locked On Rockies. You are Locked On Rockies. Your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the 18th day of July in the year 2023. I'm your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And if your team is the Colorado Rockies, well, you're in the right spot because that's what we do around here each and every day. Let's talk about the the Colorado Rockies as I, whoa, big uh, fat tongue moment right there something weird had a big uh you know fat finger moment there and i messed up uh playing the intro and now i I had that moment there but thank you for making us your first listen of the day we're on sirius xm and the sirius xm app that's where you can find the locked on rockies podcast and all your colorado rockies play-by-play action just search colorado rockies and you can get all your rockies baseball all summer long You can also get the Locked on Rockies podcast there, or you can find it on your favorite streaming service or on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show when we go live. You can be part of the show in the comments. You can help the show grow by subscribing. We are having an awesome summer here. Rockies might be tough, but... The Rockies fans, the Locked On Rockies fans have been wonderful this summer. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We'll talk more. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about the series coming up, but I wanted to focus in on some reports today of the Rockies reportedly being sellers. And we've this is a topic we've talked a lot about. There's not necessarily a ton of, of quote-unquote new developments in this, other than it's interesting to hear Bud Black talk about being sellers on the trade market. It starts with this. I'll believe it when I see it, as we have to take every trade deadline approach now for the Colorado Rockies, and, and, and most of the time is, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe when this team uh, actually makes a move. Remember, this is a team that has gone entire, you know, being the only team in all of baseball to not make a move at deadlines in the past. This is a team that doesn't necessarily have the most enticing trade options. Now, we talked a little bit yesterday about how that could change and how things could look a little bit different if players start to heat up a little bit over the next couple of weeks. But how much will that really change things in there? Two things, two pieces of uh, two articles I saw today that were that related to the Rockies and trades that I thought were interesting as well. But I kind of wanted to focus in on the value thing again. And, and, and here's the deal. I think the Rockies true best chance at figuring at getting close to competition, getting back to normal is to fully embrace the roster that is, that is right now with the young guys is continuing to see what you have in these interesting position player prospects to see what you can pan out and see if these guys are going to be able to produce uh, above average performances. And then you're going to have to go from there. If you're willing to spend the money that you spent on Chris Bryan, if you're willing to do a contract like that, then you have to be willing to entice a pitcher or pitchers to come and play and, and pitch here somewhere. Someone that, 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 that can strike batters out the Rockies need to attract talent that is going to be a little bit different than their usual philosophies and add some interesting depth. For example, again, we've talked a lot about this, a dominant strikeout batter, uh, a pitcher who can just come up and and mow people down as opposed to running the risks of having a pitch to contact mindset at Coors Field because you already have enough of those. I just don't, the, the, the Rockies aren't going to get a ton better at this trade deadline. They, however, can at least build depth in the minor league system to see what happens there and continue to see if they can develop. And 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 by continue, that's really not the best word, to, like we talked about before, is and develop the players into the best versions of themselves. 
a lot of these guys aren't going, you're not going to see the Rockies bringing in some of the top level prospects. You're not going to see the Rockies necessarily get big hauls in for these, uh, for these players, but it's better than losing some of these players to free agency. It's better to than letting these players walk. It's better than what the Rockies currently are. And as much as it's tough to see some players that have actually, you know, been good for the Rockies, probably good for the clubhouse and things of that nature, the Rockies need to get down to business of, of, of really evaluating and getting ready for 2024 and beyond. I mean, 2024 is probably going to be rough as well with the, you know, 2025, I would say at this, at this current trajectory, the rate of, anywhere close to being relevant uh, back in the game of ball, just because it, unless this team does make a lot of changes and that a lot of changes, I think, including uh, all over the place, but that's not going to come it, all the changes that need to happen for the Rockies are not going to come at this trade deadline. The Rockies are in a completely different position than they were when they had a John Gray and Trevor story where they could have gotten a lot back. I mean, and those two would have commanded a quite a bit of value back, but you are in a position that you could, you could see you you're getting something and it's good to hear the Rockies trying to take that mindset. But I, I the, the 2023 trade deadline, unless one of the prospect, unless the Rockies are able to, to get a prospect that ends up panning out being better than, than reported or, or, or things of that nature, you know, it definitely can't happen, isn't going to change the long term trajectory of the Rockies as much as embracing and letting the kids play, seeing more, getting Montero more major league at bats, getting Tolia more late major league at bats. And that, and then, uh, but circling back to that is those two come hand in hand. If you do make the moves, you open the door to that opportunity to, to really getting a good understanding of what is in your system in terms of the next level of guys that you already have, not free agents, not any of that stuff, where you're already at. As, cause as, as we, we keep talking about, all these guys need more major league experience, but they're not getting any younger. Let's talk a, a little bit more here about these. Uh, we'll, we'll dive into MLB trade rumors here first. And uh, let's dive into this here. Steve Adams writes here on MLB trade rumors.com black Rockies could be more active on summer trade dead mark uh, tr summer trade market. Uh, Bud Black said an appearance on MLB Network Radio and Sirius XM. Uh, this that this was today that the Rockies will likely be more active in 2023. I think there's probably more potential this year. Black told Power Alley host Jim Duquette and Mike Farron. This year is this is year is the year where possibly you could see more movement out of us with the players that we have and what we have going on in the second half of this year and going into next year's and the years beyond. It could make more sense to uh, to be a little bit more active. Um. <laughs> It's kind of a nothing. It's not much of a uh, a, a quote there, really. With with Bud Black, he is. I, I wonder how much he really knows, but I guess it, he does at least confirm that he's uh, you know saying that this team could be a little bit more active. But uh, just one move of one random thing isn't really uh, active. When I think active for the Rockies, I am thinking three to four deals if they can get it done. Active is multiple deals, multiple pieces being moved for the Rockies. Active is not Mike Mustakis and one other and and you know Pierce Johnson sent off for for another high A pitcher. That's not active at the trade deadline. Uh, some of the the candidates here that they talk about here on MLB uh, trade rumors here from. Uh, Steve Adams here. The Rocks do have a handful of interesting names to peddle. Veterans Randall Gritchick and Brad Hand are both impending free agents at season's end and could draw interest. Hand was enjoying a strong rebound season before being tagged for seven runs across three appearances, <coughs> ballooning his ERA up to 499. He's still an affordable lefty with a 26.1% strikeout rate. If the Rockies aren't afraid of dealing controllable relievers, particularly a pair of who are late blooming variety, well, Justin Lawrence and Jake Bird should generate interest. Jake Bird is starting tonight, by the way. Uh, and catcher Elias Diaz is also mentioned here. Uh, Pierce Johnson is uh, uh, Daniel Bard. I, I, I think... I think Bard is not going to get moved. I'll talk a little bit more about that coming up here in segment number two. Uh, and uh, we'll also go to MLB.com's all trade team where three Rockies find themselves on the list there at uh, tr uh, of Rockies to be traded. Similar names. And uh, we'll dive into a little bit more about possible trade things and uh, 
Coming up later on, too, we will talk about the Rockies uh, needing to replicate what they did this weekend, the good elements this weekend, to have a chance against the Houston team that uh, beat them pretty bad the last time these two teams matched up. Let's dive into all of that and uh, lots, lots more coming up here on Locked on Rockies. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about game time. And hey, uh, if you saw, I got to go to the All-Star game and I got to go to the All-Star game because I used game time. I bought a ticket at the last second. I was watching the prices. I was seeing what was going on up until 10 minutes before first pitch. I was watching the deals. It fell into my price range. I was able to do it. I used my code locked on MLB for $20 off and I was able to go see the all-star game last second. And I got to see Elias Diaz be a national league MVP. What a moment. And you can be a part of all of those moments when you use game time you don't need to plan months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Folks, I'm telling you, I had them right up to the minute of the event, and I had an image of my seat so I knew exactly where I was going. They were sent to my phone in a matter of seconds. Two taps. That's it. You're set. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Don't handle the stress. Just get the tickets you want. At game time, terms do apply. Create an account and redeem code locked on MLB for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. This is the Locked on Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming service, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And I want to shout out my everydayers out there for tuning in and joining us here on the Locked On Rockies podcast. Thank you so much for hanging out with us here. Uh, you can find us on SiriusXM and your SiriusXM app. Just search Locked On Rockies or Colorado Rockies, and you can get that. And all of your Colorado Rockies play-by-play -play action. Check it out. It's really, really cool. And, uh, folks, again, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Really close to 500 subscribers on YouTube. And if we do hit that number, we'll do a giveaway in August. I'm going to figure out all the details, figure out how to do it the right way. And uh, yeah, so we are really, really close to that number. If we hit that, we will do a giveaway and we'll have more details about that in August. So uh, I was talking before the break about uh, the, the trade candidates and uh, one that, that pops up a lot, especially since last year, is Daniel Bard. I think don't think Daniel Bard is going to get traded. I I mean, if the if the Rockies can get a deal, I think it's. A, I just don't necessarily think that a lot of teams are going to be interested in this version of Daniel Bard. Unfortunately, whether what the setback that happened at the World Baseball Classic when it when he was wasn't feeling himself and and the setback and honestly spring training because I believe you mentioned that being a little off before then. Pardon me, I'm gonna refresh here. I think that issue has uh, stuck a little bit long. Uh, is, is sticking a little bit more this year. And I think Daniel Bard l would rather be in his position to be here with the Rockies and pitching with this team and, and, and working on the craft here than, than being applied into a high pressure, got to get us in the playoffs, got to start making a, a situation. And I, I'm totally speculating here because he's an athlete. He's a competitor. He wants to win ball games. He wants to win. That's 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 a foundational piece of 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 players. But I I just don't know if teams are going to be as interested in Daniel Bard. I mean, it's another case of the Rockies waiting too long. I mean, the for 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 the teams to get the max value uh, or, or it depends on how you look at CJ Crone's second half last year, I guess. I mean, if for the Rockies to get max value on a Crone and Bard, they they needed to move him last year. And now with the Bard issues at the beginning of the year and Bard not being all particularly sharp this year, especially when it comes to, again, uh, walks for, uh, for Bard, I don't necessarily know how enticing he is. But it's also, when you look at things, he's still okay. He's still contributing. He's not awful but it's a little bit more shaky i think this year when you uh when you compare this year at least to uh to last year here opponents are currently got a batting about uh 15 16 more than uh points than uh uh than they were last year on him he has surpassed his walk total of last year already at 26 
Uh, he had through 25 in, in basically half the amount of time. Uh, he only this, and this is because of his time on the IL and um, the, the Rockies using him in different situations here as well. Uh, two saves this year to 37 last year. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, save opportunities. He's only been in two of them. Uh, 37 save opportunities. The Rockies have only put him in two. And he has one save out, uh, compared to 34 last year. Apologies uh, uh, for that. And then uh, the strikeouts here. Uh, 69 strikeouts there in 2022. He's at 28 this year. So mm, it's it's going to be pretty. If he, can, if he can keep up, if he can ramp him up a little bit more, he might be able to surpass that. But he might also fall behind in strikeouts this year as well. His whip. Uh, he finished last year at just at 0.99 there with the whip in his whip current. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Yep. I, I was I was looking at the wrong. Yeah, 0.99 whip in uh, 2022. Currently right now in 2023, he is at a 1.38 whip. So things are things are up in the wrong ways and things are down in the other ways for Daniel Bard. So I think that makes him a little bit less enticing of a of a of a pro of a product. But people keep bringing up a Pierce Johnson, in, including uh, in that uh, MLB trade rumors. But uh, in 36 innings pitched, Pierce Johnson has an ERA of 6.14. That's compared to Daniel Bard's 2.2. Uh, 53 strikeouts for Johnson in this time, a whip of 1.77. Uh, and he's also walked 23 people here. It, it, that So... I don't necessarily know why Pierce Johnson keeps popping up on uh, on lists other than contract control, free agency things, and and things of that nature to make him more enticing of an option. Uh, and uh, you know, you go to Brad Hand here as well, who who's got an ERA at four point nine nine and thirty two thirty point two innings uh, of work, strikeouts at thirty six though. The strikeouts uh, more strikeout per inning pitch there for for him on a whip of one point five zero uh, for Hand. So much he's uh, it's. So Bard certainly has uh, some of the uh, is certainly showing that he is someone that that is is efficient, is is helping the Rockies win and can and can still be an elite pitcher. I, I just worry that teams are down on on the mental side. And, and I don't mean this as a knock to, 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 to take it away from from Bard taking care of himself. It's just the teams are, that's got to be a consideration, right? When you, when you're looking for, you need to be able to turn to Bard in a big moment. You need to be able to turn to Daniel Bard on a one, one in a one run ball game in October with the big moment. If you're going to trade for him, right? That's the whole purpose of, of bringing someone on like Bard in there. And can Bard handle that situation? Absolutely. He's proven it. But I do wonder with the with with the struggles in the World Baseball Classic, with the struggles of the Rockies, with the increased walk rates, and in the increase in, in hit by batters as well, when we're when we're talking about uh, uh, Daniel Bard here, uh, Daniel Bard also has uh, surpassed his hit uh, hit by his hit batters from last year by one as, and has four. Uh, the most amount of batters he hit was in, was seven in twenty twenty one. No, I'm sorry. Uh, his career high is eight in 2012 uh, back there with the Red Sox. So, so a different story there, but uh, with the way he, uh, if he, if you just double that, cause you're going on, if you kind of just have him put him on the same thing in my, not really the best way to analyze a thing, but if you just kind of calculate, if he was to, to be the same exact player in the second half, he would probably tie his career highs in hit by pitch as well. So those concerns are going to be really real when, 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 uh, if, if people are evaluating Daniel Bard, but the skill's still there. The stuff's still there. It's just the there are some of those question marks that that for Bard are deeper than just the the stats. Uh, I mean, some of these other uh, these other players might be more interesting for um, these other bullpen pieces might be more interesting for the Rockies. I just really hope they don't trade Justin Lawrence. I, I think he is someone I, we, we've talked a lot about him. So. Wanted to uh, conclude our trade talk here by looking at Mark Feinstein's piece here on MLB.com. Here is the all-trade candidate team. And the Rockies do get three players listed here, which I thought was a little surprising, especially when you consider uh, overall the Rockies, the perception of the Rockies, and 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 uh, their, their abilities this summer <laughs> on the field. Uh, but instead, Elias Diaz, CJ Krohn, and uh, Randall Gritchick all listed on this uh, piece here. And the buzz factor 
that Mark uses is, is only gets as high as a medium, and that's for Diaz and Grichik here. So uh, the 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 quick blurb about Elias Diaz is uh, is this this year's All Star Game Most Valuable Player. Diaz is in the second year of a three year fourteen point five million dollar contract. Blah 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 blah. Catching is often a difficult thing to trade for midseason, but Diaz is solid defense would be a boost for many contenders down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, that's another a, a bonus of if you are looking to trade Elias Diaz is the fact that he can, uh, he he's good on both sides of the ball. He can swing the bat and he can throw runners out at, at, at a at a above league average rate. CJ Crone uh, has a buzz factor of low and uh, here's what they what Mark here says about him. Crone is viewed by uh, most as a big impact bat, but teams such as the Astros, Brewers, and Padres, who rank as the bottom three in the majors in OPS at first base, might view him as an upgrade. And uh, in case you're curious what CJ Crone's OPS is uh, this year, his OPS currently is 744. So uh, not necessarily a blow you away OPS, but if you're looking for pop, he, he's certainly there. Uh, he, he's got massive grand slam there. He's had a, he had a good series against the Yankees with a couple at bats, uh, there and, uh, is someone that, uh, certainly isn't, isn't flashy, but certainly, certainly someone that can drive you in some runs, but he's also going to strike out a lot. I think teams are definitely, but the CJ Crone will be worth rolling, uh, w- would be a worth worthy dice roll. I think for teams, just like when the Rockies signed him, I, I think Crone, still can do enough as a first baseman with power in his bat uh, and, and can help you not only, and, and plays a decent enough first base, play, you know, can can hold and, and dig out a ball. So that'll help you out here. And uh, finally here, Randall Grichik is uh, the third Rocky here on the list. And uh, here's what, uh, what Mark has to say. Grichik appears to be the most likely to be traded thanks to an underwhelming outfield trade market. The 31-year-old missed the first month of the season on the IL, but his post is an 837 OPS in 55 games since his return. Grichik is heating up in July, hitting three home runs with a 1.249 OPS in his first seven games this month. One of those homers came against the Yankees, who might view him as an answer to their left field conundrum as Grichik offers the ability to play all outfield spots. Randall Grichik, trade him. Thank you, Randall. Thank you for being versatile. You are a good baseball player who can provide value. Uh, Grichik should be a no-brainer. Uh, Grichik should be able to, you know, package it, make it a little more enticing. Doesn't matter. Uh, when you're looking at someone who can provide value and someone that that provides a little bit of interest, Grichik should absolutely fill that. And again, someone that has shown the flashes of, of what he can do, especially coming back from injury. I, I, I got to agree with Mark there. I, I do think Randall Grichik will be traded. In fact, I thought he already almost was traded, but going to have to keep an eye on that groin uh, for him. Uh, let's see. I, I didn't see, I know the, the lineup for tonight is, was released. Let me see if Grichik was in it. And okay. Uh, Grichik not in the lineup here tonight. Uh, at least the starting lineup so far as uh, the outfield is going to be uh pro far. Nolan Jones and Brenton Doyle. Okay, so the, if, if the, the, that's the big thing that'll get in the way of trading Randall Grichik is if he's hurt, uh, especially if that groin's a little bit more because the health always been a little bit of an issue there for, for Grichik. Okay, uh, let's do a quick preview of the of this Houston matchup. We've already seen these two teams lock, uh, lock up before. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the pitching matchup. Let's talk a little bit about what the Rockies got to do to uh to win this series here uh coming up in segment number three this is the locked on rockies podcast we're free and streaming on your favorite streaming service bringing you your daily colorado rockies talk right here on the locked on podcast network where you can find your team every day if your team is the colorado rockies you're in the right spot thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day hey check us out on sirius xm and the sirius xm app you can also find us on YouTube. Be part of the show there. Let us know. Fire off your Rockies hot takes in the comments section below. Who do you think they're going to trade? How much trade value do you think they have? Uh, to focus on current day activities for the Rockies, not hypotheticals and uh, looking ahead, the Rockies face a Houston team that uh, gave them the business last time, uh, beating them 4-1 to and 6-4. to Rockies did put up some fight in that, and uh, but this is a, this is a Houston team that comes in uh, banged up 
And uh, that's for sure. Jordan Alvarez, Jose Maltube, Michael Brantley, and Framber Valdez all uh, on the injury report here for the Astros. So Rocky's getting an opportunity to go up against a, a, a team that has not, uh, that that has been a little bit of a scuffle of, of late, a team that uh, is certainly uh, still capable of great things, a, a team that uh, is uh, was uh, a winners of, let's see, they, Lost a big series to the Mariners. Mariners they lost three of four. Uh, just won a uh, funky series there with the Angels with some some absolutely chaotic baseball going on in there. And uh, so, of course, a, another opportunity for the Astros to go out. They want to go out on the road, kickstart their offense at court. The, the classic story, the, the, exactly what New York wanted to do, right? Come in here, take advantage of this Rockies team, Get themselves uh, in, can keep a nice groove, keep uh, get back, get back to back series wins, and keep moving things forward here in the second half of the season. Rockies got to be aggressive on the long ball, and they got to chase some of the uh, the, the the batters out, and they got to be ready uh, to have some discipline at the dish here. Hunter Brown, six and six, uh, win loss record, an ERA of four twelve, a WHIP of one point three three. Rockies uh, going with Jake Bird, whip of 1.342 and 1, 3.70 ERA. Uh, Brown has struck out 111 batters, so clearly the strikeout part of his game. But here's the thing, 33 walks in that time, giving up nine homers. So if the Rockies can get that the, the, the good home runs, if they can get good swings on the bat, they, they should have an opportunity to do some damage uh, against a pitcher that has uh, that has shown as a, a, a little bit Home run prone here gave up uh, and, and he's looking to come back and bounce back because in his last he hasn't gone past the fifth inning, uh, the fourth inning in his last two starts here, giving up a combined 18 hits in his last two starts, eight earned runs, no home runs in that time, walked three in his last appearance in those two games. He did have over, he's gotten at least four plus strikeouts in his last five starts and uh, six strikeouts against Texas on uh, on to start July and uh, eight strikeouts in his last start against Seattle. So the Rockies want to have a chance here tonight. They got to be able to handle uh, handle the zone, get some, uh, get strike, uh, uh, prevent the strikeouts, and hit home runs. That's you're gonna beat Houston by out long balling them, and uh, it's gonna be tough to do. But the Rockies hitting more home runs, at, at least it seems like that. They are at home. They, the the Rockies trying to fight their way closer and closer to getting above 500 at home, 22 and 25 at home. So hopefully looking to uh, to, to get the split here at least. Uh, the only person that's got at-bats against uh, Hunter Brown is Harold Castro, uh, who has gone 0 for 3 against him. So Jake Bird in the bullpen going to be uh, used. Bird's uh, hopefully going to be uh, someone that they uh, – Give him some distance. The Rockies need 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 four or five innings out of Bird tonight to help them uh, be in a good position. Four or five innings of solid ball. If he gets chased early and this bullpen, and we got to turn more and more to this bullpen, it's going to be a short, quick, uh, and painful series there. Uh, these two games against Houston, they definitely can uh, can do some damage and do some damage quickly. So. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it all pans out here. Rockies and Astros coming your way. 640 Mountain Time. And folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. Thank you so much for being an everydayer. And thank you for checking us out here on the Locked on Rockies podcast. Go check out all of the other great podcasts on the Locked on Network for your second listen. But if you need more baseball coverage, Locked on MLB's got you covered or the Locked On Broncos, Locked On Avalanche, Locked On Buffs, and Locked On Championship Nuggets. They got you covered as well here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Rockies podcast.